Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode from Salvage Nation. In this episode, we're back on the Mark 7.5 VW Golf R. Now I know we've been having a lot of fun with all the bimmers, my M135i, that's been going well. My M4, that's been going well. Well, we're gonna take a break from the BMWs and we're back on a car that's been parked up on the sides and almost forgotten about until now. We were waiting for a whole bunch of parts and as you just saw by the thumbnail, it's not been cheap. So let me show you exactly what we got. Guys, if you look around, we've got a complete mountain of parts. And trust me, we've spent over three and a half grand on all of these parts directly from the dealership. And then behind me, we went ahead and spent another 500 quid on a bunch of parts um, from the breakers because we couldn't get these in from the dealership in time. Um, and we just got tired of waiting, so we just went ahead and blitzed it out. Um, we got them from the dealership, and now we're going to get started. We're going to be reconstructing the entire front end. There's a ton of pipes, a ton of broke. Everything has just been smashed because it's been the front end damage. And if you didn't check out the New Year's build, go check it out. We had this car back in December. We got rid of it, and then it came right back a month later with yet another smash. But this car is unrecorded, and we're going to be selling it at the end of this build. This episode, we're going to just blitz out as much of it as possible. So stay tuned for all of that. I've done enough talking, there's a lot of work to do, so let's get into it. So after spending over four grand on parts, it was time to get started. I had to get all of these broken bits off the car, have a look at this air box, it's completely toasted. Now this is held together with some rubber grommets at the bottom, so all I had to do was tug it out. Next I had to tackle all the broken pipes and rubber hoses, and due to the nature of the crash, it was a frontal impact, everything was pressed backwards onto the front of the engine, so as we go through it, everything is just broken, all the pipes, all the rubbers are snapped, and it was just a complete maze going through everything and this was the bulk of kind of spending a ton of money on these replacement parts a lot of sensors a lot of brackets a lot of junctions have a look at this one this was just smashed and it's just a matter of painstakingly going through each and every one of them I kept getting nicked on my fingers from all these shards of broken plastic but we keep going next up was the charge pipe now this one alone was over 150 quid and there's one on the other side so just on the two charge pipes we spent almost 300 quid that is VW performance parts for you so 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 expensive so with that broken one out it's a case of out with the old in with the new as I remove the parts I'm going to be replacing them with a light for light part so that I know exactly where it goes where all the screws go where all the nuts go After a quick review, it was in with the new charge pipe. Even putting it back in was a little bit of a task. We had some broken nuts that were left in place from the previous one. With those out, it freed up the space to get the new one into place. It was a little bit tricky, but there's nothing that we can't handle. And just like that, this is the new pipe that's on the car. With that done, it was time to turn my attention to the other side and the second charge pipe in question. As you can see, that is completely smashed as well. So just like I did with the previous one, it's out with the old and in with the new. So with the new charge pipe in place, it was just a matter of tightening on the T30 torque screw, um, putting in all the clips and then we moved on to some more pipes on the front of the car. Now this junction was 200 quid, believe it or not, <laughs> it's still very expensive. At this point I got Akil to give me a hand so I can get you guys a bit closer to all the action and we are just continuing to replace all the broken rubber hoses, rubber pipes and junctions. This is proper puzzle. This is the one that connects to the radiator, so we just had to take the broken pipe or broken end off the rubber pipe and reconnect it to the replacement. After that, it was just a case of repeating that same process for all the other broken pieces of hoses and pipes and what's not, and we made light work of that. Alright so guys, have a look. It's been about two, three hours of just sifting through what looks like a puzzle, man. Oh, we need to insert 
this air box but before we do I just want to explain to you everything that we had to do because it is quite a lot and it's very intricate so let's check it out so guys have a look at all that junk on the floor right there we had to take off all of these broken bits have a look all of those broken pieces of pipes pumps and we replaced it so we've got one charge pipe right there that's for the um, intercooler we've got a second charge pipe right there that's where it ends right there that's for the second intercooler and then just a lot of these water junctions all the way in there and what happens is the water is stored in the expansion tank it comes down to the main water pump which is in there it comes out of the water pump and it goes down now cars of old would have just had just one water pump but this car has got a secondary water pump right there so now everything is plumbed in um, somewhere in that mountain right there is a radiator I believe it's this in the box right there we're gonna get the front rads out and what I want to do and what I want to do is just check to see if all the water system is plumbed in and then we can continue with straightening up this chassis leg just the front bit there I need to fix and then hopefully we can continue to just unbox if you look somewhere down in there you'll see on the floor is the front panel and just some other bits and bobs there that needs to go back onto the car but that is a major major step forward in the right direction let's get this bad boy on the car and test to see if it's plumbed up so moving on it was time to replace that broken air box once again just put it in place and popped it into the rubber grommets making sure that everything was in its correct place Next it's time to assemble my brand new front rad pack. All the bits have been sitting in the back of the car for several months now. Like I said, we got everything brand new from the dealership. So I had to connect the intercooler to the front water rad and everything was going good until I opened up this box and this happened. Alright guys, so you just saw as I'm putting oh, this little Yeah, I want sandwich. Yeah. Sorry about that guys. Lunch time. Anyway. As I'm putting together this little rad pack, as you can see, everything is nice and new. I've got the intercooler followed by the water rad. And I was looking, I did order everything and I was looking around in the boot, looking around everywhere for the AC rad. And it looks like they've sent me out the wrong radiator. If you look, I can see it, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's these two little rads on either side of the car. They're fine on my part. They're completely fine, so we don't need this. So they've sent out the wrong rad. I've just called TPS, they're going to be sending out a new one. The saving grace is that fits onto the front, so I can do that later. For now, let's get this bad boy onto the car and continue to check to see if it's all plumbed up. So as you can see, everything is just looking an absolute mess right now, but we're about to change that. In comes the front slam panel, and I just need to get some old brackets and screws from the old broken one. This is why guys, you never throw away your old broken parts until the build is complete. You never know when you're gonna need screws, brackets, clips, or connectors. Two number 10 nuts held this old bracket in place and I was able to transfer that to the new slam panel. Now it's time to fit my replacement rad pack. If you look at the top, here is the top water connector and at this point everything was going nicely until this happened. Oh my god, oh my god. And just like that, ah, so frustrating. I went ahead to change this part because this bit had snapped off and clipping it into place, this bit is snapped off again. Come on, more. Guys, this is so frustrating. I, I, you just saw just now, literally just fitting it on and then these things are so flimsy. Um, the original one is snapped, the replacement one that we bought is snapped, so now I've got to go out and get another replacement one. So it defeats the purpose of today. It is now just gone three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, by the time we call up the dealership or try to find one online, it's not gonna come today, so we're gonna have to pack up everything now. Still got a ton of stuff to do, but we can't continue. Two reasons, obviously that is just broken, but another reason is the AC rad. We can't go ahead and fit the AC rad. Um, there's no point assembling any more than to take it all off tomorrow. We got an AC rad coming out tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to pause right now. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm fuming. So I'm gonna pause right now, go out, you know, crack on with something else, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. 
Alright you guys, so it's the next morning here and if you remember yesterday, listen, I was so frustrated. This is the first time I feel on camera that I got a little bit frustrated where I couldn't just keep it moving. But anyway, I went home, I had a good night's sleep and I'm back today. If you remember, we were putting together the Rad Pack and TPS, um, they actually sent me out the incorrect Rad Pack. Um, I called them up yesterday, I've been trying to order it in. They're saying it's going to take a week, two weeks, it's got to come from Germany, la de la de la too much i can't wait like that i want to get this card done get it out of here so i called one of my other suppliers and in this box have a look there you go that's the ac condenser so now i can complete the ride pack get my cross member on and assemble the front end on the car so let's do that so it's a new day and we came back in with fresh energy trust me i needed it after yesterday but anyway it was time to just add that ac condenser onto the front of the ride pack and get this bad boy onto the car On most VW and Audi cars, the front rad pack is held in together with a giant clip into the front slam panel. The front slam panel is then screwed into the front crash bar and the entire assembly is then screwed onto the front of the car via the two chassis legs. I hope that makes sense. So with all of that assembled, I simply had to lift it in place, line up the bolt holes and use four number 16 bolts just to secure everything down. With all of that done, it was time to transfer my bonnet lock and the crash sensor from the old broken slam panel onto the new one and feed the connecting line through this tiny little gap. With that done, I simply had to connect the AC pipes from the AC pump onto the AC radiator which I had just fitted and that was it. The front assembly was done. Right, so on with the front end assembly. Um, the headlights, if you remember, were slightly broken on the tabs. So after a quick test fit, it was time to fit the tab repair kit. It was pretty simple and I picked up each tab repair kit for about 40 quid from TPS, which is my local VW and Audi dealership. So it's quite clever the way this works. Most car manufacturers, they design the headlights with the tiny little sockets already built into the existing headlight that in case any of the headlight taps are ever broken, you can simply buy these kits from the dealership and replace it by screwing it into those existing sockets. So with my tabs repaired, the headlights were able to be fitted without an issue and we were able to secure it down with those new tabs. And there you have it. I was able to save these headlights by replacing the tabs and here we go with a quick test to make sure that my low beams, high beams and hazard lights are all working and I was happy. With that done, it was time to test the water system. Alright you guys, so if you look behind me, I've managed to partially reassemble the front end. The headlights are on. You saw me fit, you saw me fit these headlight repair kits. That's a big tip. These headlights are like 500 quid each and just for these tabs, I think each pack of tabs, I bought one for the left, one for the right, is like 40 quid for the pair and now I can use my headlights again, so top tip. But as you've just seen as well, I've topped up the, the cooling system with just water for now. I want to test to see if all of these pipes and the connections are alright. The engine, the car is running, I need to get it up to temperature, make sure that it's under pressure um, and then I'm just going to check for any leaks and everything. So whilst you enjoy these slow motion shots, I'm going to wait for the car to warm up and then we'll see what we got next. Alright you guys, so 
I hope you enjoyed those slow motion shots. We managed to do so much work in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I just want to point out a few things. I went ahead and I left the car running for about 40 minutes. Um, I know it's safe because the water, there's enough water in the system. However, there, it is leaking and I showed it to you right at the top. If you remember yesterday, I was so annoyed. I accidentally broke um, that pipe right at the top. There's a little nipple on that pipe. It's like the return pipe back to the top of the engine and it goes back in. It's needed to close the loop of the cooling system um, and it connects to this little holes right here. That's the only place that is leaking because I loosely put a screw into the hole so that the water is not shooting everywhere, but it, it can still relieve the pressure. Now, um, we've got that coming in the post, so we have to wait for that. We're waiting for a bonnet, and then after that, we can continue with the final assembly, prep for paint, spray this car, and this car is gonna be done once again. And we're gonna do all of that in the next episode. Um, but for today, we managed, I'm very happy, I've checked it over, my cooling system is secure, all those pipes, the broken charge pipes, everything that was broken um, has been replaced. We used all OEM original Audi parts, um, like I said, the parts, like the title says man, rebuilding a Mark 7.5 Golf R is not cheap. We spent over 4K already on parts. Three and a half at the dealership plus another 500 at the scrapyard. And we still need more parts. Um, and now I have to go buy that hose once again. So guys, go on over to shopsalvagenation.com, support your boy, buy some merch, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. The majority of my views come from people who are not subscribed. And if you want to see how we get on with this build or any of my other builds, make sure your bells are on, and that way you get a notification every time I post. Trust me, I'm going to be up in my content. I hope you've enjoyed the more cinematic style of shooting. Let me know what you think. I'm just experimenting with everything at the moment. But this is where we're going to leave this episode. The Golf R is almost done and we made major, major steps in this episode. So guys, like I always say, keep it moving and I'll see you in the next one. Guys, thank you for watching. Click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch. Click here to watch one of my previous episodes. And like it said there, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We out.